Welcome back to Fab Automotive Detailing. In this video, the Jeep needs upper and lower ball joints. I'm going to show you how to do it. Let's do it. So I got a lot of stuff going on today, and I do have the exhaust fan on, uh, so you might be hearing the noise in the background. But I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna be changing it, and I'm not doing this, this stuff on video. But I'm changing the transfer case fluid and the front and rear differentials, and I use all AMSOIL fluids. Here's my upper and lower ball joints, and I also got some sway bar links and sway bar bushings. And then here I have some quick struts and some rear shocks, and then I got my grease and stuff, and I bought some under under body uh, paint, rubber rubberized under undercoating for the car, for the rear end, the front. I mean, there's some stuff I just want to get some undercoating on. So I just want to kind of give you guys a quick overview of all the stuff that I'm doing, but I'm not showing all of this on camera. The only thing I'm going to be showing on camera are the ball joints. Okay, so when you do ball joints, you're going to need some type of ball joint press. You can get them at Harbor Freight. You can get them at any automotive store. You can also get, you know, expensive ones like Snap-on, Matco, Cornwell, Mac, stuff like that. This one right here is mine. It's a power built. I bought this when my wife worked at CarQuest when she was a manager of CarQuest. She was a manager of CarQuest forever um, until they got bought out by Advance. I bought this from CarQuest. You can still buy this at Advance Auto Parts. You can still get stuff warrantied for it through Advance Auto Parts. This kit I think is about two. Uh, it's been a long time since I bought it. Two to three hundred dollars, I think. Um, back here, you know, kind of gives you directions on how to do stuff. That's what this is right here. It kind of you can flip the pages up. But basically what you got is you got a big C-clamp, big heavy-duty C-clamp. You got your forcing screw, which is going to force the ball joint out and force the new ball joint in. You've got all your cups, all your adapters, like this one right here. I have to use this kit when I do Chevy Trailblazers. Because Trailblazers on the lower control arm, there's two little notches on each side that you have to catch with this. But it won't fit back here. That's why it's cut out the way it is. So this kit I still use, but I don't use it very often. And... Anybody that's ever used one of these knows, you know, when you're putting these when you're putting these cups on here like this, all this thing does, this little, I'm trying to do this one-handed, all this thing does is it sits down in the press. Let me show you, if I can. Probably can't. Let me put the camera where I can maybe show you. It's going to sit down in the press like so. Just like that. That's it. And... If you've ever used one of these, you know that it can quickly become hazardous. Um, I'm sorry, people. It can quickly become hazard hazardous when you get the ball joint out and these things just fall to the floor and hit your shin, your toes. Because I don't, I don't wear steel toe boots. They hurt my feet really bad, and it's really hard to stand all day long on a concrete floor in those, in my opinion. So I, I don't wear them anymore. Probably dumb of me, but it is what it is. I'm a lot more comfortable in in my shoes. Now this kit right here, this snap-on kit, it is expensive. You know, this one, like I said, is two to two fifty. This one is about six fifty, I think, right now, from snap-on. And yes, if you're somebody that works out of your garage, you know, working on your own cars, you do not need this kit at all. That's not why I'm showing this kit. I'm showing this kit because this is what I use every time I do ball joints, which is weekly. Um, around here, it seems like I do a lot of ball joints. It's probably the most. That's probably what I do more than anything else, better than brakes, ball joints and brakes. But this kit is worth every single penny if you're a professional and you do this daily. Because it speeds time up. It, I mean, you can get ball joints done so quickly with this. I mean, this, this clamp, the C clamp, what I call it, the press, is humongous. It weighs a ton. It makes that thing feel like a little baby. And it's got this big forcing screw with big threads on it. And the nice thing about it is the threads are greasable, so we keep grease on them. And then you got your cups, and what I really, really like about this design, let me put the camera down, see if I can show you. What I like about this design is, see this little ridge right here? Oop, that little ridge right there? So when you're putting your, your cup on there, it snaps in. Look, it doesn't fall off. It's not gonna hit your toes. It's a great design. Snap on, you know, knocked it out of the park on this one, I guess I should say. But they do charge a lot more than what what they should, but they know mechanics need them. But it is a time saver and it it's 
I don't know. I, I hate to say it's worth the money because six hundred dollars is a lot of money for this, but it, it's worth it when you do them daily. I can tell you that much. And the last thing you're gonna need, as far as a ball joint is concerned, is you're gonna need some type of snap ring kit. This one is a snap on snap ring kit. Um, for your external snap rings to hold the ball joints in. If your ball joints, you're doing half snap rings. Now some cars don't have snap rings they're just pressed in and that's what holds them in. So we're gonna do it on the passenger side here because I'm close to my toolbox. My toolbox is right here. And that way if I, when I need tools, I'm close. I don't have to walk around the car and leave you guys recording. Um, so we're gonna do the upper ball joint. If you get a light. We're gonna do the upper ball joint right there. And then we are going to do the lower ball joint, which is right there. Now I'm gonna get the camera all set up. I'm gonna try to get the lighting the best I can. Our shop's lighting is not the greatest, even though we have all LED lights in here. It's it's still not the greatest. It's better than it was, I can tell you that much. So let me get the camera set up. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do is get your wheel off, obviously. And you're gonna turn, turn the wheel. And you notice I did not paint the back of the calipers. Ain't nobody gonna see this. I'm not wasting my paint. But uh, yeah, make sure my microphone is on. What you want to do is you want to get these 21 millimeters out. You do not need to take these out right here because you don't need to separate the caliper from the bracket. We just need to get the bracket bolts off, unless you're replacing your brake pads and everything at the same time. And this could be a little loud. My impact's pretty loud, but it's 21 millimeter. That's what it is. Most cars are all metric anymore. This might be loud. There's one. There's two. And hold on to the caliper so it doesn't fall off and break your brake line. Then I'm going to use a caliper hook right here. I'm going to slide it right in there. We're going to hang it up here on the spring. Try not to mess your guys' light up too much. Just like that. We're going to take the rotor off. Set it aside. And basically, that's it for that right there. So now you need to get your tie rod uh, off of here. Now, let me stop real quick and say, if you don't have air and you're doing this by hand, which I don't think people would be doing it by hand, but just in case, if you have to break any of the ball joints, uh, you know, nuts free, you're gonna wanna keep this on if you're doing it by hand, if you're using a wrench, because otherwise it's going, it's gonna help you, you know, lock it in place so you can get those apart. Otherwise it's gonna spin on you when you try to take it off. But this one is a 21 millimeter as well. You're gonna get up here and hit. Okay, lay your nut aside. What you're gonna do, what you're gonna do is not hit the bolt right here. You're gonna hit the knuckle right where it attaches. It's gonna take several pops probably. There we go. Tie rod is off. So the next thing you wanna do is you wanna get your axle nut off of here. This is a 36 millimeter on the Jeep Grand Cherokee. Most cars are about a 36 millimeter. Axle nut is off, and then while you're sitting here looking at the hub, I'm gonna try to change the camera on you guys here. You're gonna have to take this ABS wire off. You do not need to disconnect it from the back of the knuckle where it goes into the, actually from the hub, I'm sorry, um, on, this, on this model. You don't need to disconnect it from the hub. What you need to do is you need to follow it up. Follow your ABS wire up. See, and it goes down, right there right there but then it hoops back up and then it goes right there and right there on the Jeep is where it connects so I'm gonna go ahead and get that loose and we're gonna take that off with the with the knuckle okay so now we need to get the upper ball joint loose and it looks like about an 18 guessing guess it's an 18 all right that's the shop phone it's not my phone now I'm gonna use a universal on mine when I do this, that way I can get in there with an impact and not have to do it by hand, you know, using a wrench or a ratchet. Just a little universal right here, made by Cornwell, I think, this one. And mine has a lock on it, so you can't pull it off. That socket can't come off and take your eye out or break your nose or knock your teeth out. And get up there and we're gonna hit it with the impact. Sometimes the whole ball joint spins. If it does, I'll show you how we take care of that. It did not. So, now we need to do, we need to separate the upper part of the knuckle from the ball joint. But before we do that, no, actually, we can go ahead and do that. I gotta move the light though for you guys because I gotta smack this thing. 
And what I like to do, nothing's gonna come apart, nothing's gonna happen, but it can fly up on you and either scare the crap out of you or something. I like to get a pry bar on whatever I can get it on, kind of pull down on it. Oh. There you go. Upper ball joint is free. Okay, so now we need to get the lower ball joint nut off and it looks like a 21. It is a 21. Lower ball joint is free as far as the, the nut is off of it. Now you gotta do the same thing that we did a minute ago. Now this is where you have to be careful. In fact, I'm gonna put my axle nut back on so that this knuckle doesn't fall down on me. And I normally wouldn't do it at this height, but you, I want you guys to see this. But we're gonna smack it right here. Uh, hang on, my wife just showed up. All right, back to work we go, unfortunately. My belly is full. Now I'm tired, don't even wanna finish this, but we got to. Uh, Casey's Pizza, if you guys have a Casey's General Store near you, they got the best pizza in my opinion. But anyways, let's get back to the what we need to do here, we're gonna smack right here on the knuckle until that ball joint pops down. Another thing you can do is you can actually use an air hammer and you can hit right here to push it up. You gotta be careful because you don't wanna mushroom the head of this because then it's not gonna come out or then you'll have to cut it off. I've done that, so let's see if we can smack it a few times. I don't like smacking aluminum too much because you can split it and crack it, but hopefully it'll come free as easy as the top one did. You're just gonna smack right here. If I hit the threads, no big deal. I'm not gonna be reusing it. There we go. Now what you want to do is take your axle nut off and that's only on there just, just to make sure it doesn't fall out on you. You're going to push the axle through first. Let me see if I can get this. Sorry, you guys probably don't want to stare at me. You're going to push the axle through with your hand and as you do that, kind of wiggle it down and out and the knuckle is off. There's the knuckle. So what I want to do from here is, I got to do the lower ball joint. I'm going to do the lower ball joint first. I want to put that axle up out of my way. Because right now, you know, it's in my way no matter what I do. So I just take a, a cord. Just enough to get it up out of my way. Actually, that's not even going to work on this car because I'm hitting the strip. So we're just going to have to work around it. Which isn't going to be a big ordeal, I don't think. What we're going to do now is we're going to have to get this lower ball joint out. We're going to have to use an uh, air hammer. So I want to show you guys, this has actually never been done. It's got 170,000 on it. It's got the original ball joints in it. The reason I know that is because they are stamped in right there. That's a stamp. And right, right there is another stamp. So what we got to do is I got to use the air hammer. Which is going to be loud, I know for sure. You guys will probably be in my way. So what I'm gonna use, let me just show you what an air hammer looks like in case you don't know. This is my air hammer that I got. I got a chisel bit on the end of it. Oh, man, I'm just knocking you guys all over the place. So what we wanna do is we wanna get that out. Not hard to do, it's kinda noisy. Just like that, you just wanna fold it over. And then you wanna do the same thing on this side. Just like that, and what I like to do is I like to go around the whole ball joint just a little bit. 
Just real quick, real quick bursts. Some cars have snap rings from the factory, so you don't have to worry about doing this. Chrysler and GMs seem to stamp them in. It's a good time to wear safety goggles. Okay, I'll get the tool set up. Okay, so my ball joint tool does not want to fit over the boot for the ball joint right here. And I can't, I don't have anywhere to put a light, so I'm gonna have to turn the light off. What I'm gonna do is I take a little, take a screwdriver. And we're just gonna take the boot off just like that. Now, my cup should fit in there. Nope, not that one. Man, that one's a little too big. What's going on? Have a different cut. I might have to use my tool on this one. So it looks like, I don't know, that might work. Let's give it a shot. So we're gonna be using the snap-on we're gonna use this bit, which is for forcing the ball joint out right here, and then we're gonna have the cup down here. It's a 22 millimeter. So hopefully this goes well, otherwise we're gonna to have to switch to my tool. This axle is right in my way. Nothing's going the way I wanted to. Get that axle get out of my way, it'll be good. Here we go. The ball joint is out. Sorry, I just kicked you guys. There's the ball joint. So your new ball joint is going to be obviously the ball joint. And then you got a new snap ring. You got your castle nut and washer for the castle nut. And you got your cotter key, cotter pin, whatever you want to call it. And then you got your grease dirt uh, for the for the lower ball joint. The, or for the ball joint, not lower ball joint. Both of these I bought are greasable. Uh, right here. I bought DriveWorks from Advanced Auto Parts. We use these all the time at work. We've had no problems, no complaints, and they are more than half of Moog. Moog is $47, I think, and the lowers were $21, and the uppers were only $15 through DriveWorks, and they're greasable. I can keep them greased, and we, like I said, we use them at work all the time. Never had any issues out of them. Once the ball joint's out, you don't want to put the ball joint in here with this rust and everything that's inside here. So get some sandpaper. This is some emery cloth. I just go around, I just do a quick buff to get any burrs or anything like that off. You really don't want to use a power tool to do this. You don't want to make the hole smaller than what it needs to be because then the ball joint won't stay in there tight. Okay, and then from there, Put some grease on it. A little blob of grease here on my hand. You can never use too much grease. It just helps it go back together that much easier. It does make a little bit of mess on your hands, but it's worth it than trying to put it in dry. As you can see, these have, I guess I should have showed this before I put the grease on. There's like little splines. That's what's going to bite into the metal when you shove it in there, when you press it in. So now we need to, we forced it down, now we need to force it up. So this, this boot is actually going to be in my way, so I'm gonna have to remove this boot. Should've did that before I showed you guys greasing it. Ugh, dummy. Just gonna get up in there in that ridge. You're gonna pop that boot off just like that. 
Now I gotta figure out what I need to put it back in. Now let me show you something important. When you go to put the ball joint in your cup that you're gonna be reusing, because see, I take the I had to take that boot off because I need to push it in. You know, it needs to push up, and I can't use that rubber; it split it, obviously. So what you have to remember, you see that right there? Let's see if I can show you. The stud of the ball joint sticking out. You have to make sure you get something like that so you don't push on that stud. If you push on that stud, you're gonna ruin this ball joint. Speaking from experience, you know, as mechanics, we do stuff fast. I mean, that's the way that we were taught. Anybody's mechanics taught, you know, time is money. And we do jobs as fast as we can. Sometimes you get in too big of a hurry and you make mistakes. So just make sure you take your time, pay attention to what you're doing. If you're using a press like this or using a press like the other one that I showed you, um, just make sure you pay attention to what you're doing. We're gonna need a receiving cup right here. You have to make sure it fits over the top of the ball joint, which it does. It's gonna go right here on top. Got grease all over my hands. Get my impact down here. Now on some ball joints, it tells you inboard and outboard. This one does not have an inboard or outboard symbol on it anywhere. So I can put it in any direction that I want. And the direction I really want is I want to make sure my cotter key is side to side. It's the only thing that really matters to me. Okay. And this thing, like I said, it is freaking heavy. It is hard to hold up here for any amount of time. This snap-on press. And make sure when you start it in, you start it in straight. Okay, now we just gotta use the impact. We're gonna push that ball joint up in there. Compressor just turned on, so that's what you're hearing. Okay, the new ball joint is in. As you can see, I made it. You can see that hole right there, you probably can't, but. Now we need to put the snap ring on while we're right here. Open it up, get one in, get the other one in, and you can kind of push it down in place. I don't know why I'm shaking so bad. I like to do, I'm about to go around you guys. I like to come in backside, make sure it's all the way in and down. We have to spin this one all the way around because it doesn't seem like it's going in the groove on the back of it. And I'd rather be safe than sorry. So I'll just do it now while I see it. Like that. I'm smack it again, hopefully not smack you guys. Okay, snap ring is in. Now while you're here, it's a good time to put your grease zerk in. It's hard to do once you put it back together. Like that, and you want to put it where somewhere where you can get to it. A little 10 millimeter wrench. Doesn't need to be really tight, just enough to not come free like that. Put it right there. Having it right there like that, I know I can get my grease gun in here when it's all put back together. Now, speaking of grease gun, this is a good time to make sure, because I have gotten many ball joints, that the grease zerk doesn't work. This is a good time to make sure it works, so I'm going to do that real quick. And 
and you'll know immediately if it works or not. Yes, it does work. I brought my grease gun from home because my boss uses the cheap stuff. So. I like good grease. And I'm going to raise it up so you guys can hopefully see the bottom of the ball joint. Now this is the this is the difficult part to me on these ball joints that you have to take the boot off of. Man, I wish I'd give you guys better light. Let me see if I do it like this. Hopefully that's better. A little bit better. Um, it's hard to get the bushings on without splitting them when you have to take those boots off. Boots, not bushings. When you have to take the boots off to, to put it in. And the next question is, what do I do with it? Oh, it's frustrating. All right, dummy. Oh, it's right there. It's on the, on the lift arm. Sometimes you can get lucky, and it'll go right back on. Ha-ha, <laughs> like that. It went right back on. That is awesome. That never happens, trust me. So we're about halfway there. Now we need to get the upper ball joint out. And so we're going to we're gonna have to push it up this way, because that's how it comes out. Now you're going to notice it's going to have to come back in the same way that it comes out. So it's got to come down. You can't get that ball joint press up here. So you have to kind of do it backwards. But it works. On this one here, we got to get this, this boot off to push it out. So just take your screwdriver. Get up underneath this metal tab. Metal clip, not tab. And kind of work its way around the ball joint. These things are such a pain in the butt. And they're really a pain in the butt when you go to put them back on too. So that's how you get that off. Now this one here is a little tricky because you see how long the stud is and we need to hit right here to force it out. And you need a cup big enough to receive the ball joint right there as you can see. It might actually be too big. We're gonna find out here in a minute. So what I'm gonna be forced to do, I'm gonna be forced to put this one on the press and just kind of set this one on top of it. it doesn't lock into it. This does not happen very often, but sometimes you have to just do whatever you gotta do to make something work. Let's see. Okay, man, this thing's heavy. You know, use a little bit smaller one. I do not like doing it like this, but I don't always like doing everything that I have to do on cars. Okay, so the press is on, it's set up. Now there's not a lot of room at the bottom here, so hopefully I can get my impact on it. Okay, ball joint is up. I'll try to not get my toes smashed. Work backwards here. Voila. So I changed the light here. You guys may not even see me get the ball joint out. I just realized my light was over here, so I was probably blocking it. But we got the grease in there. It's cleaned out. I used emery cloth. To put it back in on this model, you do not have to remove that uh, metal clip that goes all the way around. Some, some cars you do. It's a pain in the butt. But I got lucky on this one because you see, it goes right through. The bushing goes through. No big deal at all. Now here's the important part. is you So you're going to be using the ball joint backwards. So you're gonna be forcing up into the control arm, but it's gonna be pulling the ball joint down. The top of the, uh, the press is gonna pull the ball joint down, but you have to make sure you do not force into your stud. Because if you if you force into your stud, I'm telling you, it pushes that stud right up through that ball joint, breaks it, and now you gotta go buy another ball joint because they won't warranty that. Uh, so what I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna use the top of the press to push the ball joint in, I think because it looks like it'll fit good. Let me see if I have a smaller cap. Or larger, I mean. Actually, that'll probably work better. So we're just gonna, we're gonna go that route right there. My light's probably in the video. Oh well. Um, but now we have to make sure, this is very, very important, that you have something that'll fit like right there. That's gonna work. That way I'm not going to get into my stud. My stud is way up there. You gotta remember, it's gonna come down you know, that much. So you have to give yourself plenty of room, plenty of wiggle room. 
and sometimes it doesn't fit the way you want it to either. So let's try it like this. That'll work. So as you can see, it looks like I'm forcing the ball joint up, but I'm not. All right, here we go. Let's pull that sucker down. Ooh, Ooh the axle's right in my way. Hang on a minute, people, I'm having an issue here. Can't get on it for some reason. Oh yeah, duh, dummy. Okay, here we go. Hopefully when I edit this video, I'll remember to turn the volume down when I use the impact so it's not really loud for you guys. Here we go, now we gotta put the snap ring in just like the other side. Or just like the bottom, I should say. This one you have to squeeze quite a bit because it's gotta get around the boot. You don't wanna rip your boot. Come on. Get in there, buddy. There's one. Now I can get it to where I can smack the screwdriver around. I should be able to just use my hand. Should, there we go. And I'll go and I'll put it back in here. Just to make sure it's in there good. It is. Squeeze them together. Snap ring is in. Now we're going to put the grease zerk in. Ooh. About took my foot off. Not used to having this much stuff around me when I'm working. And then we need to make sure it tastes great. I need to get a swivel for this grease gun. It's the way that it's set up, it's a cheapy. It's not one you hold the trigger down and the grease comes out quickly. It's a cheapy from Menards. It's one shot. Yes, it takes grease. I can see the the boot going down, and that's it. Now, I'll come back in a minute. I need to put my sway bar link and my sway bar bushing on this side, and then I'll come back and show you guys how to reinstall, which is basically reverse of removal. But uh, I'll show you guys. That thing just kicked my butt, but it's in. I had a very hard time getting it out of here. I got my new sway bar link on, which you really can't tell because I put some undercoating on everything. Got my new bushings. You'll see that they're they're blue. They're moog. Trust me, they're blue. Yeah, right there. Sway bar bushing on this side. Got that on. Now, so I put the knuckle on. I'm sweating my butt off. I mean, that just oh, just kicked my butt. So basically it's just remo reverse of removal. Pick your knuckle up, make sure your ABS wire is not behind it. Make sure it's in front of it. You want to slip it on the bowl joint and the axle at the same time. A little something like that. Make sure you put your washer on and your castle nut. Okay, you don't want to tighten that down until you get the upper on. Now the upper you're gonna need a pry bar. Man, I'm sweating like a stuck pig. Okay, make sure you put your washer on. Sometimes it's not easy to do one-handed. I'm gonna use my chin to hold it. There we go. 
washers on. Now it's time to tighten down. Probably not the same size as yet, the same size as factory. Oh man, I am I am wore out. I'm sweating. I did not think that quick strut was gonna be that hard to put in, but man, it whew, about killed me. Alright, put this on. Now Oh, that's perfect. First time. My hole is lined up. I'm going to put my cotter key in. Now, here's how I like to do cotter keys. I like to put them in like that, straight. And then I just pull one down. And I try to wrap it all the way around it. Just like that. So, now we need to put the bottom one on. It is nice having a lift, I'll tell you that much. This is probably a 21 or 22. Let's see if I can give you guys a better view this time. Probably too much light. That'll work. 21. As the rust falls off, there you go. You got it to where the hole lines up. Same thing, I'm gonna put it in with a long end down on the bottom. Pull it around, just like that. That's it. That's all it takes to put that on. Now, we're just going to do this in real time. What the heck? Let me lower it back down. I'll put our axle nut on. You guys can't see what I'm doing. Make sure you start that axle nut on by hand first, like I just did. Don't want to cross thread that. Let's torque the factory spec right there. Tie the rod. Now sometimes these want to spin on you when you go to put them back in, when they're used. When they're new, they're pretty stout. They usually hold themselves. Yeah, I got lucky. Okay. Now, real quick, I want to grease them. I have to take a break after this one before I go do the other side. go and I like using this red high temperature grease I'll show you doing the bottom one I'll show you doing that one Raise you guys up. Now you can see the boots kind of see that right there. We're gonna fill it up just to where it starts to expand. And hopefully, let's see, can you guys see that? No, of course not. What about that? Yeah, good enough. Oh, let me get my gun on first. Before I start putting grease in it. 
There we go. There. See it started to expand? It's full of grease. But you don't want to put too much grease in that you rupture the the boot. Otherwise you'll be doing this job again soon. Just enough. And then I grease them every oil change. Wow, oh, sorry about that. Just got grease all over my tripod. I'm telling you. When you're tired, you do stupid things. So now what I want to do is I want to run my ABS wire back in. So I'm going to put it back in. So you guys are looking at me, not, not the car. You put it back in all of its original holders. Try to not break them when you take them out. That way your ABS wire is not going to get caught down in the rotor or something to where it rubs through. I used Detroit axle quick struts. They were off Amazon. They were cheap. Uh, it came with rear shocks and struts for $190, I think. It's down. Put that back up where it goes. Everything is looking good. Time for a rotor. Let me if I can turn this thing. Oh, goodness. The rotor. Now I'm going to take an oversized nut. Put it over. Hold that rotor in place. Make sure my backing plate's not touching. Otherwise, we're going to have noise when we drive it. Now, my outer pad started to fall out, and I didn't want it to hit the floor, so I took it out. Hopefully, I can put it back in. Ah, oh, yes, I did. Without having to take the caliper off the bracket. And I am, like, pouring sweat. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Turn away for one second. Hold on there. There's that one. There is that one. Of course, we need a swivel again with a 21 on it. I didn't do it. Getting right to the end of the video and I can't find anything because my cart's full of tools. And there you go. This side is done. Now I just go on the other side and do the reverse remove reverse. What I just did here, I'll do everything I just did here over there. Um, I'm not going to film any of that. So my car was empty before I started the ball joints, and here you go. These are the tools that I used. Hope you're writing a list down of what you need. And then here is one of the old ball joints. This is the upper ball joint right here, and that's the sway bar bushing, which I didn't show you guys doing. I didn't show you guys how to test ball joints. I probably should have. I didn't even think about it. I tested them myself when I came in. When I did these brakes, that video I did the brakes, what you do is you have the car on the ground, you put a jack under the control arm, 
jack the control arm up enough that you can get a pry bar underneath the tire pull with a with a pry bar up and down the tire and then watch the ball joints have somebody in here and watch the ball joints and if they're moving then you know your ball joints are bad you guys have to take the load off the ball joint to check it you can't check it like this when it's in the air because of the load on the ball joint um ball joints aren't that hard to do they are time consuming if it's something that you're not comfortable with doing you know heavy duty stuff i wouldn't do it i'd probably take it to a professional like a shop like here where i work um but if it's something that you're willing to tackle if you have the right tools the job isn't that hard now i'm sweating my butt off because that stupid sh quick strut fought me really bad the ball joints like i said aren't hard i hope this video helped you guys out if you're planning on doing ball joints uh, this is the first video i've done on ball joints and i think it went pretty well um a few mishaps here and there my wife caught us in the middle of doing something i had to eat lunch but other than that um it turned out well uh the steering's gonna be good and tight now i mean we could kind of hear a thump every now and then that's one of the reasons i checked them when i did the brakes so this side's done the only thing i haven't done to it is i didn't replace any control arm bushings or the tie rod or inner tie rod because everything's tight so this is basically a rebuilt suspension for the most part um, and everything in the steering wheel should be good and tight i won't need an alignment because i didn't do anything that would mess with the alignment sometimes when you do quick struts it can mess the alignment up so just check your steering wheel before you do it and then after you know if it's off just a little bit then you know you're gonna have to go get an alignment but hopefully i won't have to do that so like i said i hope you guys enjoyed the video i hope it helped you guys if it did give me a thumbs up hit that subscribe button while you're down there we do detailing videos we do repair videos um anything that comes to my mind really tour reviews product reviews stuff like that and uh, we will just see you next time